Good morning, it's day 153. It is 11.15. I'm just getting ready to eat my breakfast. I'm just having cereal this morning. Uh, about 200 calories after the milk and everything. Uh, I'm just trying to clean as I go. Uh, keep the house clean, you know, because keeping something clean is easier than letting it go to crap and then trying to pick it up and clean it and everything. So, trying to uh, develop some new habits. I'm also going to uh, drink a little bit more of my water and uh, get a Coke Zero. Very late start today because I stayed up so late last night I didn't get up until almost 10 o'clock. Look guys, still clean. Wow. It's a record. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you these shorts. Um, I don't think I'm going to be wearing them out of the house right now, but they are size 10. And uh, I don't have a whole lot of muffin top going over the top, a little bit. Um, oops. So, not too bad, size 10. I know that I showed you guys the size 15 jeans, the old gold jeans. Um, and they were like kind of fitting me snugly or whatever, but I think they're junior size or something. I don't know. They run really small. Obviously, I'm wearing a 10 here and then a 15 there. And they're fitting about the same. <clears throat> but um, anyway, I just want to show you that. We're going to go shopping. I wanted to go like to a thrift store and look around or something. I don't know. I've been looking on this, um, you know, on all these websites for like design ideas since I'm like in the mood to do that lately. Um, even though we've probably spent enough money <laughs> lately on redecorating. Uh, but I just figured I'd look around. I'd like to find like a... Um, Kind of a Alana, kind of a gaudy, kind of ornate, kind of red picture frame that I'd like to put. I well, not red, but I'd like to paint it red and put it like up over there. I'd also like to find something else to put in this area <laughs> because it's a big space. Um, and I've got some ideas, but you know, there's some things I need to find. I don't think I've ever showed this to you guys. This is how awesome my husband is. My husband made this all by himself. He is not an artsy, craftsy, picture, photo album, scrapbook kind of guy, but my husband made this for me for our last anniversary. Can you believe that? How sweet. I don't mind bragging on him because he's awesome. And what are you doing, little miss? Messing with my makeup brushes. I'm trying to remember where I got these makeup brushes. Can't remember. They're the ones that Candy Johnson um, recommended like months ago or whatever. I got like a whole set for like $30 or something. Anyway, um, this is us like throughout the years. 2002, 2003, 2004, you know, our time in Germany and then there we are in Paris and Madison was born. Then I lost the weight, and then I got pregnant with a lot of, here we are in Florida, and then he wrote me this poem, I'll read it to you guys, because I know you won't be able to read it. Happy anniversary. Your love is like the crisp, cool air on a clear spring afternoon, filling me with that sensation that everything is just right. My love for you burns hot from my core, like fusion shining a bright light, but I have no confusion about my decision to marry you eight years ago. To the contrary, I simply know we are fundamentally bonded. When I think of my love for you, my heart beams my love in all direc directions like a star shining its light brightly, flowing into the far reaches of forever. 
long after we are gone, my life will still, my light will still be going at the speed of light, telling everyone that Brian loves Sarah. <laughs> he is a little bit of a scientific dork, if you can guess, but how sweet, right? Um, anyway, just wanted to share that with you since I was standing here. Uh, I gotta get the girls ready and get the dogs put up, and uh, we gotta figure out something for lunch since it's about lunchtime. Maybe go through the drive through somewhere uh, healthy-ish, or maybe just grab some sandwiches. I don't know what we're gonna do. What do you got, Alana? A glow worm. Is that your, is that your glow worm? Aww. You love your glow worm? Hi, Madison. Hi. What are you doing? I just went to the bathroom. You did? Thanks for sharing. What do you got? Uh, I got a backpack right in my back. Why do you have a backpack? Because I have stuff in it. I just have... My mom said I could have only one thing. I put one thing in there and then... Okay. That's all I did. All right. Okay, so maybe I might have some quiet time. I've got both the girls in the van, so I doubt it. But uh, I really wanted to talk to you guys about this thing that I've been thinking about um, lately. And it's actually, like, really changed the way that I look at my life and uh-huh and there's you know sometimes there's there's these kind of light bulb moments in your in your in your life that somebody says something to you that's pretty simple you hear something that's like duh um, but for some reason you didn't actually put it together before and you, then you put it together and things just look differently to you now. If you've ever heard of the, uh, I've talked about it before, but I think it's called Seven Seven Habits of Highly Effective People or something like that. They talk about something called a paradigm shift, which a paradigm is just like the way that you view something through your own filter. But a paradigm shift is just when you when you start looking at something differently than you did before, pretty much. Um, anyway, that's what I've, I've had. And the way that it happened, and I think I might have already uh, mentioned it to you guys, but the way that it had happened was I have problems with frustration, anger, temper, um, stuff like that. I wouldn't say it's um, at certain Points it is to an unhealthy level, but I wouldn't say it's at any kind of threatening level or anything like that, and it's not all the time, it's just sometimes. Um, but anyway, I was watching this episode about Dr. Uh, this episode of Dr. Phil, and it was about these people that have like out of control anger. And Dr. Phil was talking to them about it, and then they also had some other kind of expert person on there. And so he was, um, they were all talking, and I think the expert said, or it might have been Dr. Phil, I don't know which one, said that, you know, anger is not a true emotion, it's just the, what comes out in place of these other kind of emotions like frustration or hurt or disappointment or whatever, but most of the time frustration, um, which I had, I had already heard that before, you know, that anger is not a true emotion or whatever, so if you're not dealing with the root of the actual real emotion, then you're not going to deal with anything. Uh, anyway, the long and the short of it is, because I'm going to have trouble getting to what the point is, the whole point is that they were saying 
your frustration or your anger is built upon your expectations not being met in a certain situation. Now let that soak in for a second. If anger is not a true emotion and it is really only frustration or hurt or whatever the other thing is that I can't remember right now, then it is only when your expectations are not met that you will feel these emotions. For instance, you have an expectation to be treated a certain way by a certain person, a certain group of people, or all people in general. Uh, and if you're not treated that way, um, your expectations are not being met. You may feel like you're not a worthy human being. You may feel let down by humanity. Um, whatever. If you have an expectation that your 10 year old son is always going to put his bike in the place that you told him to put it and he doesn't put it there and you allow that expectation to exist when he doesn't do what you expect you may become frustrated and you may let that frustration build to the point that you display that as anger okay so that was a real eye-opening thought for me to have in that if that is a given what we just talked about then if I want to minimize my feelings of anger or frustration or hurt then what is the what is the catalyst what do I have to change what do I need to do because once I, I I'm, ha I'm having trouble keeping myself from being frustrated by whatever I've tried that I've tried deep breaths I've tried being more grateful for the things that I do have you know I've tried lots of things to try to minimize my my anger my feelings of anger my feelings of frustration or whatever so what I really have to do is deal with the root and this is I think where a lot of people get hung up is that they believe the root is whatever they feel like is making them angry for instance your son not putting his bike where you expect him to put it. So in order to keep the peace and keep yourself from feeling frustrated and angry and temperamental and whatever, well the thing that needs to happen, the thing that needs to change is that your son needs to put his bike where he needs to put it all the time in order to keep you happy, right? That's what needs to happen. No. That is not the root. This is my mind, I'm not the expert, I'm just telling you what's going on in my mind, okay? What you need to change is your expectation that he's gonna put it there. Now, from a parenting standpoint, that doesn't mean that you're gonna give up holding your children accountable. That doesn't mean that you're going to give up expectations of your children and what they need to do. Um, that doesn't mean that he doesn't need to put his bike where you would like him to put it. What needs to change is the 100% do or die expectation that that bike is going to be put in that spot. Because once that expectation changes, therefore that alleviates the frustration. If you don't expect that bike to be in that spot, when it's not in that spot, you're not going to be frustrated. So, in that situation, you can require that your child puts his bike in that spot. But you can expect that he won't. Not to say that you're going to you're going to count on your kids to fail, but you need to have that as a possibility in your mind that children, just as all people, are fallible. They are not going to be perfect. 
100% of the time, they are not going to be consistently perfect to your control or your standards or your expectations. So once you let go of that 100% all the time expectation, it then completely alleviates your need to feel frustration and then therefore anger. So to conclude what I was saying, what I've been doing is making an attempt to change what I now see are unrealistic expectations about everything. I need to change my expectation that every driver on the road is going to drive how I would prefer that they drive. I've got to change the expectation that everyone is going to go as fast as I would like to go or as fast as the speed limit is or I need to change all those expectations because once I wipe that off of my mind then I can just breathe easier. I don't know how to explain it and some of you may hear this and go like what are you talking about like you may not get it at all some of you I know you know what I'm talking about and some of you have probably already figured it out and I know it sounds like so super simplistic but I'm telling you it has really turned things around in my life you know like I don't know I can see now that I had like super unrealistic expectations for my children because I was expecting them to, I don't know how to explain it, like I was expecting them to always do what I want them to do. And now I realize that I can hold them to a standard, but that doesn't mean that they're always going to meet that standard. Wow, I just had like the craziest driver ever <laughs> just go in front of me. Um, anyway, I can have a standard for them, but that doesn't mean that they're always going to um, meet that standard, and I need to expect that um, as far as an expectation. I have to know that everybody is fallible in everything. Not everybody's going to treat me the way that I may feel that I am entitled to be treated as a nice person or as a polite person or as a human being. Um, that's not always going to happen. Um, I, I can't expect that my house is always going to be clean. So, I, I, I don't know. I, I just, I hope that you guys understand what I'm saying. I hope that you, um, that this can somehow help you in your life and, and to try to avoid uh, frustrations. Because I'm telling you, once, once you embrace realistic expectations of the world and of people and of life and of situations everything goes so much smoother so anyway that's um, really been on my mind lately and I it's really helped me I'll give you guys another real world um, example of what I was just talking about um, I went to the mall the other day with Madison and when you get to the mall there's a turning lane there's actually two lanes to turn into the mall, to turn left, uh, and cross the other uh, lanes of traffic and, and turn into the mall. Well, if you are more than like probably six or seven car lengths back, you're not going to make the light. Well, in the past, for some reason, I, I have a control issue. And control is the same to me now I see as an expectation of meeting my, my control. Well, obviously things are not in my control all the time. Well, that light, even though it's like I know that I'm not going to make it if I'm, if I'm back that far, for some reason I allow myself to expect that I'm going to make it because I'm expecting everybody else to go as fast as I think that they should go so that I can make the light. Well, as soon as this is on my mind and I went to the mall the other day and I'm back there, 
And there's a thin line between this and, and kind of pessimism, but you'll be able to tell. So I'm sitting there, and I say, I don't expect to make this light. Because I was sitting there at the red light, and then I knew it was going to turn green, and I knew that I wasn't going to make the green arrow, and I knew it was going to turn around again, and I was probably going to be the first or second car to make the next light. So I'm sitting there in the first red light, and I'm just saying to myself, I don't expect to make this light, and it's okay. These other people in front of me will go, and then I will stop first or second car, and then I'll make the next light. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. And I was a second car, and you know what? I didn't feel any bubble of anger. I didn't feel my face get flushed. I didn't, I didn't feel any feelings of frustration or anger because I had changed my expectations. And I had said, it, and it's okay. It's not a pessimistic thought. It was a change to a realistic, calming expectation. Hey guys, um, 4.35, Madison had one of her biggest meltdowns ever when we were at um, Old Time Pottery, which I've never been there before. Um, I went to the Salvation Army store first, and then I went to Old Time Pottery. And um, I'm trying to be quiet because Alana's trying to sleep, and Brian's trying to watch a TV show. And I'm trying to be quick because I know I talked a lot earlier. Um, as I said before, I've, I've always, like, I'm not a professional designer. I don't really know, like, how to decorate very well. I mean, I kind of like the things that I've done, and I know some of you, thank you, you've, you've said that you kind of like it too and everything, um, but I still left a little confused. And so I've been doing a little research, and I've kind of come, I think I told you about the whole kind of traditional, whimsical sometimes kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm trying not to go too contemporary because then I think I get hung up because I don't have contemporary furniture, you know, I don't want to be too contemporary. So I'm trying to go a little bit more traditional with uh, some more of my choices. So I've been looking, sorry, I've been looking for a fruit bowl, uh, but all the ones I've seen online or anything are like 20, 25 bucks. I found this at the Salvation Army today. And it is was only four ninety nine. And I've got um, fake fruit in there right now, but I'm going to put some fresh fruit in it when I get a chance. Um, this guy I got at Old Time Pottery. My like I said, my first time there. Oh, I love it. This was twelve ninety nine. It's like a wood kind of ish thing, and I was thinking I was going to. And you're going to laugh because I'm going to say paint white everything and my husband's kind of laughing at me. But that's kind of the kind of airy, kind of light look that I'm going for. And he doesn't really understand that right now because the kitchen is so dark and I want to lighten it up a little bit, you know. So I was thinking about painting him white and then distressing him. Um, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. Um, so yeah, that's what I was going to do with that rooster. These I found at the Salvation Army. Um, these are for a curtain rod. If you were to buy these retail, these would probably cost you at least $20. I paid less than five. I'm going to paint them white and I'm going to use them in our bedroom for our um, sliding glass door curtains that are way too long that I have never hemmed. So if we hang this up higher, I won't have to hang hem them. Um, got a little piggy bank for Alana. Madison didn't get one, that's why she had a monster fit. Um, thinking about doing a little redecorating in the pantry, trying to kind of make things look a little prettier since I have to look at it all the time because that's stupid door. Um, I got this cool kind of old timey kind of jar with a cork in it. Uh, I can use that for almonds or dried cranberries or little snacks like that. I got another one of these kind of um, jars uh, for $1.99 at the Salvation Army. Got to clean that out. Got this gaudy looking lamp uh, for $4.99. I'm going to paint it white and put it in on uh, Brian's dresser. I'm going to get a drum shade probably, um, kind of like that one to put on it. Um, don't really know, didn't find a lampshade today. 
Then we have these guys. These are really loud, but I love the shape of them. And I thought if I painted them white and then possibly distressed them or possibly just keep them solid white, a la white, hello, okay. And I want to put them up in that corner right there. Um, I thought that would look really cool. These were at Old Time Pottery, $15 a piece. I found this metal kind of plate at the Salvation Army for $3.99. Um, it's like brass, some kind of cheap something, but it's got a cool scene of a woman with a child talking to uh, uh, some people sitting at a table or something. I don't know, I just thought that was interesting. So I plan on um, painting this white and then distressing it, um, either by sanding or by doing just some silver ink along the raised parts uh, since we've kind of got a, a silver stainless steel nickel chrome kind of coloring going on in the kitchens instead of the gold. Um, then I got an 8 by 10 frame. I'm going to paint this white and I'm um, not sure what I'm going to uh, where I'm going to put it but I have one of my favorite photos I got blown up to an 8 by 10 for free from Walgreens. And so I wanted to get a frame to put it in. That's Madison and her daddy. And this little plate holder thing I got for like, uh, I don't know how much it was, a dollar something at uh, Old Time Pottery. This, since I've kind of got more like a natural kind of theme going on in the living room area with like birds and leaves and trees seems to be the theme that's going on. Um, I thought this was kind of a cool painting for $7.99 and I'm going to um, maybe paint the frame white and distress it. Maybe not. I haven't decided. And I haven't even decided where it's going to go yet. And this I'm going to paint white and distress it. And it is going to go right up there, right above the entertainment center. And my favorite piece that I found today is this gaudy mirror, which I am going to paint red, same color as my walls in here. I'm going to paint it red, and then I am going to... Um, I don't know if I'm going to distress it or not. And then it is going right up here. Where I'm sure you guys can't see. Hold on. Anyway, I'm going to put it there. Um, I'm going to hang it. I'm not going to lean it. Um, but I think that'll look cool. Oh, jeez. Almost tripped. Once Brian gets his telescope out of there. Straighten up the books some. I think that'll look really good there. Um, my battery's about to die, and I know I already talked a whole lot today, so I just wanted to show you guys that haul, and I'll let you know how it goes. Hey guys, um, it's 10:24. You like my Tiffany blue nail polish? One got messed up because I painted it too close to bedtime and had to put pajamas on while my nails were still wet. But some of them, whatever. I'm not really usually do nail polish, but um, whatever. Sometimes you just gotta have a little fun, right? Um, I, well, I decided, number one, not to paint that thing. I did a little kind of, um, I had a gold ink pad that I used for scrapbooking. And so I kind of did like a little, how do I explain it? Kind of just rubbed it on the thing, on the raised pieces, and kind of rubbed it in a little bit to give it a little, like, <laughs> you artsy-craftsy people will know what I'm talking about, but I don't know how to describe it, because it was just kind of like a flat kind of brown color, and so I wanted to give it some shine, some dimension, or whatever. Some of the other pieces, like, you probably can't see that, but you see, like, that piece up there has, like, a gold, whatever. Anyway, I got that up there. That plate does not fit up there on that stand, so unless we can bend the stand somehow, I don't know what we're going to do about that. 
I painted that lamp and you can't see it. I'll show it to you tomorrow because I only have one coat of it on there and you can't really, whatever. Um, it's all kind of, you just see the brush strokes on it and stuff so it needs another coat and I don't have a shade for it right now. Brian said he liked it better before. I'm like, really? Whatever. Um, I am on my calories again today, guys. So, for lunch and afternoon snack today, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, I had two peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And then I didn't have anything until dinner. And for dinner, I had some sweet potato fries with ranch. Um, and I threw in, um, I don't think I told you guys, I threw in two chicken breasts um, with some chicken broth and barbecue sauce into the crock pot today at noon and then we ate it about six and I just shredded it up with uh, two forks and added um, took the before I shredded it I drained the juice that it was cooking in out because it was too watery and then I poured some more barbecue sauce into the chicken after I had shredded it up and uh, served that on some toasted buns and that's what I had for dinner then I had a sugar-free whole fruit bar um, that was 50 calories, and then I just had a 50 calorie fiber one bar, and it's 10:30. So that's what I ate today, along with lots of water. I was 157.8, so about one and a half pounds up from yesterday uh, after my indulgence day, which yeah, I overdid it a little bit, I know, um, but hopefully I weigh less tomorrow. And uh, I should be letting go of that water weight now from the monthly, so should see a good loss this week. Are you up for another week? I know I am. I'll see you guys tomorrow.